So this is another convolution example, but in this example, we're going to do the convolution in MATLAB. So this script right here is called Triangle Convolution Example, and I've already started running the script. I've put a little breakpoint right here, and I've started running the script, and this script is really going to do the exact same convolution that we did in our previous video, where we convolved two triangles, but now instead of doing it analytically, kind of pen and paper, we're going to do it numerically in MATLAB. So the first thing that I've done is I have created a time vector. So on line six right here, I've created a time vector. I'm letting time go from negative four to four, and I picked some kind of arbitrary number of points to linearly space across that time. The first thing I'm going to do is construct the original triangle signal. So the original triangle signal is going to exist on the time axis, and I'm going to call it x. So it'll be called x. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find indices where my signal x had a certain slope. So these first indices, it only existed between minus 1 and 0. That's where I had that um, positive sloped signal. And then the other set of indices is when time was greater than 0 but less than 1, I had a negative sloped line. So this chunk of code there will handle the negative sloped line, and this chunk of code right here will construct the triangle with the positive sloped line. So if we step through that, we now have a signal x that is length 16,384, and it's 0 almost everywhere except for the indices that we found where we need to populate either a positively sloped line that intercepts at y equals 1, or a negatively sloped line where it also intercepts at y equals 1. So as a first little check, let's just go ahead and make sure that we created this signal correctly. Let's plot it. So I created a figure, and then I will plot this. There's the figure. So let's go ahead and plot this. So there's a plot. So there's our triangle, and I'll clean it up a little bit. Set the limits, make the axis bold, label it, and give it a title. So now that's what our triangle function looks like, and this is indeed the triangular function that we were looking at before in the previous video. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the convolution. So MATLAB has a built-in function called CONV conv. So if I convolve x with itself, I will get the convolution of x with itself. And notice, notice I've given it the argument tick same, close tick, which basically says after this convolution is done, only return the central 16,384 points. If you don't give it this argument, then MATLAB will return something twice that length. So this does the convolution for me, and the only thing that you have to be careful is in MATLAB when you're trying to convolve continuous time signals, MATLAB can't store continuous time signals, no computer can. What we really have done here is created samples of a continuous time signal. So when I do this convolution right here, MATLAB is doing this as a discrete time convolution. It thinks that it's a discrete time signal. So really what I want is an integral, which does numerical integration by accounting for the size of the step in between different times. So if I take the difference of t and then compute the median, this essentially gives me the time spacing of that vector. So really what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by delta t, which in this case, for the time vector I've chosen and the number of points I've chosen, turns out to be about 4.9 e to the negative 4. So if you're going to try to do continuous time convolution and get results that make sense, make sure you multiply by dt after calling convolution operation here to make sure that your results make sense. So I now have z, which is also length 16,384, and we can plot this, start a new figure and plot it, and we end up with a function that looks like this. So this is what MATLAB says the convolution of two triangles is equal to. At the bottom part of this script, now what I'm doing is I'm just evaluating the analytic results that we had from our previous example. So previously, we figured out that between time greater than or equal to negative 2 but less than negative 1, that our convolution was actually equal to 1 6 times the quantity of t plus 2 cubed. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to evaluate analytically our results from before and plot those in MATLAB on top of this to make sure the answer from MATLAB matches the answer that we computed. 
So let's keep stepping through. So if I step, step, step. So this should plot our convolution between time minus two and negative one. And I had the wrong figure. Let me reevaluate this again. So there it is. So that's the function that we got analytically, and it's right on top of the MATLAB code like it should be. The next time interval was when time was greater than negative one but less than zero. For that period of time, we have this analytic result. It's kind of ugly, but it was one third negative t cubed plus three t plus two, and then there's this minus one sixth term that we had to tack on from the previous result. So where this came from is not clear at all from this video, but if you watch the previous video, where that equation comes from should be very clear. And we plot that, and it's right on top of the MATLAB results. And then this part right here, this next period of time, when time is between 0 and 1, I plot that in cyan. So let's go ahead and get that copied, paste it right here. And it looks like... that right on top and then finally the last period of time when time was greater than one but less than two we step through and evaluate that and actually we can just go ahead and step through the rest of this code and let it format the axes and everything as well and it didn't do it because I had the wrong figure selected there we go there's that fourth port I did in magenta and all of these regions are right on top of the MATLAB just like we expect it to and this confirms that our analytic results from the last example are correct and also that we've done the continuous time convolution in MATLAB correctly. Now, continuous time convolution doesn't really make sense. We can't really do that in MATLAB. We can do it numerically. And doing it numerically means accounting for the time differential appropriately. So you can call MATLAB convolution function, but it's expecting discrete time signals. If you want it to kind of spit out an answer that's right for a continuous time signal, make sure you account for this by multiplying by dt. And that is the end of our example.